Hey guys, this is John and Austin, and this is another episode of the Meet Your Sticks podcast brought to you by Waltons. As you can see, we have a new toy, um, visual aid. Well, just for some that some can't see. Well, they should watch it on YouTube then. Yeah, but if you know. so, uh, it is a Samsung Flip, is what it's called, and it is a uh, touch screen like you can draw on this you can circle things uh very useful for some media stuff it's not in draw mode right now i know so to get point. to draw mode you have to hit this thing on the bottom here um oh wait was that why that when i was trying to mess with the touch stuff it wasn't working i don't know i bet it works now i didn't know there was a button Did on the bottom the noise yeah. so i can draw an s inside of the s so i don't know all sorts of interesting possibilities. Um, probably more useful th for live streams and podcasts, but I we'll don't, have it up here. Yeah, I just I, I don't want to wait three weeks for the next uh, live stream. Time like, to use it. I want to do a live stream now. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Well, we are getting the stuffers back in on the 17th, and somebody did say, hey, you guys should do a live stream when they come back in. We can actually draw the winners on the live stream on there so people know we're not cheating. But that removes our ability to cheat. <laughs> wait i don't i don't ever cheat are you cheating <laughs> no no but it would be funny um but yeah so it says you can control it but i don't think that's accurate it's at least not accurate right now so at some point we'll be able to use this as a oop, do you want to let's just try don't save there we go we'll go back to the beginning anyways it's a cool little toy we're gonna play with it throughout the podcast live streams all that stuff Patrick is doing things. Like you what? I was standing on it. To, oh. to close that vent? Yeah. yeah, the the vent kicked oh. on right as we started. I knew that bothered him. Um, but, okay, so we've got a couple of things. Let's do this first, then we'll do this. Okay. Okay. So we've got some andouille Cajun sausage seasoning up here. Uh, I have been eating a good amount of andouille recently uh, because I'm trying to eat everything in my freezer in my basement so that when I move, I have less things that I have to, to move. So reach over and snag some. I found that I absolutely love this with some spicy brown mustard. Mm. But it doesn't need it. It is absolutely mm. delicious all on its own. It's been so long since I've had Andouille and that is amazing. First thing I've eaten all day. I almost enjoy like not eating some of our products and some of the seasonings and stuff for a while because then when I do, then I'm like, oh, I remember how much I love that. I, this is andouille. Ooh. That might be part of the reason why I always like am surprised by how much I like our chocolate chili bratwurst because that's not something you're going to eat more than like once every year at most. Mm -hmm. Man, that is good. That is a good sausage. Is this the fresh one? This is the fresh one. Okay. Which is how I think it's best, to be honest. I mean, I know we have the the Andouille Cajun smoked. Um, yeah. I'm not opposed to smoked and cured sausages, but most of the time I prefer fresh. If I want smoked and cured, I usually am going for more snack things. Or. Summer sausage snack sticks. Or something like ring bologna or oh, yeah. like something like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I agree. In general, I want just a, a fresh fresh sausage that I'm going to cook and eat right then. I mean, let's be honest. I'm going to cook and eat almost everything. That is so good. Mm -hmm. I would sit here and just eat and eat and eat and eat. Well, we eat. can. Just keep eating. We've got Damn. a whole other one. But we probably shouldn't eat too much because of what you have right there. It is not Booth Creek Wagyu, which was a very mean trick oh, to bring in the bag. They, no one else saw that. You just oh, gave free advertising. Come on. My bad. No. It, I don't. Yeah, I don't care. I just yeah, faced it that way. But no, it shows when I went and bought stuff at Booth Creek, I bought enough to get a free cooler. <laughs> but that was the cooler that I had accessible to me this morning. So grabbed so it and when I was grabbing stuff on my way into work. You want to talk about what's in there? <clears throat> Uh, sure. So we talked, it was first start like two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I don't remember, uh, talking about milk and it was because of bird flu stuff and we were down a rabbit hole and we were talking about raw milk. We're going back down that rabbit hole today. 
Okay. John thinks that raw milk is a pet food product, basically. No, no you're misunder <laughs> you're misrepresenting. I, I know. I'm I'm okay. I'm just okay. giving you grief at That's this fine, point because I like to see you get riled up. Yes. So yes, it's not a pet food product. But in some states, to be honest, I, I would I would see them setting it up that way. Yep. So you have to you have frame it as that or something. But in Kansas, um, you you do not have to do anything crazy with it. You do have to specifically label it and talk about it as being raw, unpasteurized milk. Um, there's a bunch of different things that go into it. I can read more of it as we get into it later or now. Are we doing all of it now? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, bah, 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 bah. basically, uh, according to Kansas law, uh, you have to say, I understand. Uh, oh, no, here we go. This one. Uh, raw milk products has to be sold on or from the farm where it was produced to the end consumer. It, the transaction and the sale must take place on the farm where it was produced. All advertising in any containers must plainly state that it's raw milk. Raw milk, um, unpasteurized. Uh, what else does it say here? Um, yeah, basically it has to be, again, it, it repeats itself and says must yeah. be clearly labeled as ungraded raw milk. It's, it's very repetitive, not only in that, but also I looked up some stuff online and it, that is very repetitive as yeah. well. It, now, legal speak, but. just in that, what is not happening here? Like in, in one that two sentences you read, how are you getting this milk? How am I getting it? Oh, I went to the farm. Ah. It, I did not. I take that back. My wife went to the farm. Okay. Paid for it. Right. And then after you pay for it, then they can uh, deliver it whenever you, they basically say, hey, we're coming to your area in two days. Um, do you, you want some? And you just tell them what you want. You've already paid for it. So um, you like have to pay up front in advance. Each for a time? While. Or no. Can you leave your credit card with them and they we can just basically it? like we, we went and like they charged us for a I mean I don't know I, I don't know exactly how a much subscription we, or whatever yeah, they charged us a hundred dollars okay and so each time we are like hey we want this and this and it's ten dollars so they knock that uh, off and they credit. take it off our credit okay. basically it's that like sense. that so um, you could go there and buy it each time but they're also. I don't know, an hour away from us. That's so I don't really want to drive that far. And it's not like um, we don't exclusively eat and drink raw milk products because it's expensive. It's like a, it's a treat. It's a every once in a while type okay. of thing. Um, it is very good though. So um, what have you brought for today? <clears throat> we have raw milk. Straight up just That just looks milk. like eggnog. I heard somebody say that earlier, and oh my God, does it look like eggnog. But it's it's because it's going to be creamy. You got to okay. shake it up. It's, I mean, there's nothing's been done to it. It is just going to be thick goodness. And then you want real thick goodness. This is where you go. Kefir. Right. Which one should we try first? What does that say on the front of it? Does that have a one cent sign? One quart. One quart. Okay. So uh, we should do the milk first. Oh, it and is then, very cold. So yeah. don't worry about it. I also brought... Cottage cheese. Mm. Do you like cottage cheese? I'm not a huge fan. This is the greatest thing okay. on the face of the I'll planet. I'll try a little bit if it's um, really that good. If it's that good, you're not allowed to eat like all of it. This is mine and I'm oh, taking geez. it back with me. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> like, so let's the, go the milk. milk and then let's go kefir and then we'll try some of your cottage cheese, which I will probably wash down with cottage cheese. Okay. Okay. That's not quite as thick as I would have. No, anticipated it's, it. I mean, it's not like it's pudding. I mean, you can still it's get not, you can still get whole milk from the store. It's still going to be pasteurized, and it's going to be a little different. But I mean, it's it's. I I I'd we, we talked about this the other day. Like I grew up on like one percent milk, right? Sometimes skim milk, so like any type of maybe two if you're lucky. Yeah. So anything above that to me is just it's gold luxury. I'd be very interested to know right before while you, right before you started talking, my stomach growled like crazy. I'd be interested to know if this microphone picked that up. So mm. stomach going crazy before we eat the, or drink this. Then also, have you read any of the um, uh, bird flu in dairy cows in Kansas issues? Oh, no. In no. Kansas? Oh, yeah. Oh, this is great. Yeah, let's go. Pasteurizing does kill it. I talked to your brother about that. This is not pasteurized. So. I know. So to the raw ha milk. <laughs> have fun with bird flu. 
Oh, wow. Boy, that is quite good. You know what that would be amazing in? Everything. Some sort of milkshake, <laughs> like a protein oh, yeah. milkshake. Oh, my. To, to be honest, we haven't had we haven't had milk for a while, um, but tonight um, we will probably make like we usually try. Like both my kids are not very big. Uh, my daughter is, is very tiny. Yeah, she needs tiny. she needs more calories, so we'll, we make like protein smoothies for them at night. Sometimes um, we'll be doing a raw milk protein smoothie, and that's going to be delicious. How much was this? Um, I'm 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 looking that up. I forgot. I th- I want to say. That the gallon is, yeah, per gallon it's fourteen seventy five. So, so I said it's a it's a once in a while thing. It's a treat. You don't, I don't know, unless you have a unless you have a lot of disposable income, right. you don't buy a gallon every two days and drink it. No, like, that's, that's insane. <laughs> but that is very good. That is way better than I was expecting it to be. Like that was tasty. Um, all right, let's try the kefir kefir. Mel Kuyper Jr., Kiefer Sutherland, however you want to say it. But yeah, that is definitely in the win column because that was delicious. <sighs> Ruined it. I'll wash Ruined off it. Cap. I think it still needs shook up. You what? It needs shook up. It needs more shaking up? Yeah. Okay. Need to get a little space in it so we can shake it more. It's like uh, the Chiquita banana stuff. Sounds oh. like we're on a game show, and it's like <laughs> that did actually kind of sound like that. Did we lose? So this is going to be a problem. We'll have to work out some settings on how we do this. While you do that, I'll get us reconnected. Oh, I need to. People need to see this on camera. How thick it comes out. Uh, yes. That's not thick. That's chunky. Yeah. I mean, you could shake it more, but I don't want to sit here and shake it more. <laughs> okay. But it's, I mean, it's almost as thick as yogurt. It's a cross between milk, yogurt, and sour cream. Okay. I'm watching your... Ooh, you don't seem to love it. It's weird. It's good, but it's weird. No, I'm a fan of that. You like that? Yeah, I like that. It's got a nice tang to it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I like anything that has like, like I love snack sticks with a high pH because I like that tang. And this isn't quite like that, but it's in the same vein. It's like a, it's a little thinner than sour cream. It's kind of like yogurt, but it has the sour cream sour yeah. to it. Yep. Yeah, this will this will work. And this is excellent for your gut microbiome. I have not had a glass of whiskey in 10 days now, <clears throat> mostly because I'm buying a new house and I have to stop spending money <laughs> on alcohol, but uh, so I wonder if this will start helping heal my gut bacteria because my stomach's just been oh, insane. Yeah, for sure it will. Like this is some of the best. I mean, that, that's part of the point of raw milk yeah. is it is better for your digestive system and everything that goes on inside your body. And kefir is just 10 times better than even that. So this is straight from the cow's think pad? <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> I knew that joke was good. I was waiting for it. That's an inside joke. You guys wouldn't get it. All right. So that is also very much in the wind column. Both of those things are delicious. Let's try this cottage cheese. Oh, do we need spoons for it? Probably. Okay. I'm in on so you go to the store, you get get cottage cheese, and most of the time, I think it's like watery Water. and yeah. runny. This is not watery at all. Solid, not nice. Solid. Yeah, I would take a very small piece because if I don't like it, I don't want to. If you do like it, you can have more. I won't be so stingy with it. It smells good. It's thick. Yeah. Yeah, that's phenomenal. It's real. It's that's it, incredible. It's really good to just treat a sour cream, throw some seasoning in it, and then use it as a chip dip. That does not need any seasoning. That's got a very pleasing taste all on its own. Everything can 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 use seasoning. <laughs> There's nothing wrong. With it. Sorry, we do sell seasoning. It's my bad. Yes, it needs seasoning. Always add seasoning. I, I know. I I'm, right, I'm not going to eat any more of your of that. Um, I would like a, another 
small glass of milk though. That's Kiefer, okay. I told my wife that we're not coming home with the milk or kefir. So. Oh, okay. Awesome. Cause I can't believe this is actually going to go to my office and that will be my lunch for a couple <laughs> days. I can't believe how much, uh, how much I like that. I'm not a big milk person, but that tastes not, it doesn't taste nothing like regular milk, but that is significantly richer. That has a lot more flavor to it. We should, I should, I should have bought a gallon of skim milk just compared it side by side because you drink skim milk compared to this and the skim milk would be disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, we have uh, users now on every continent, but we need to reach out. Somebody's got to get down there. Some research station in Antarctica and get somebody to. I think that one up. research station is the only semi-permanent. Right, because there's no more whaling stations down there, which used to be. So I think it is. I'm just... a I'm a creative fake user. <laughs> Put them on Antarctica. Oh, wow, that is excellent. All right, now a little bit more of the kefir, and then we should probably move on. But two really good food items today. Right. Mm -hmm. That is not a bad way to. I still have a hard time getting over the kefir as I watch it being poured. Poor, but, yeah. But it tastes and it drinks fine. But I still look at that first consistency and it gets me every time. No, but as soon as you, as soon as you take, you have to like sour cream. It's yeah. like the perfect. You have to like that. But if you like that, you'll love this. Um, when I was a kid, I was never a fan of unflavored anything. I had to always want strawberry or chocolate milk or something like this. But oh, dang it. My son this morning told me I needed to get chocolate milk and I was going to go to the store and get Ovaltine or something and I forgot. Ovaltine? Yeah. Put Ovaltine in your milk? Do you know what Ovaltine is? Only through uh, a Christmas story. You've never had Ovaltine? I don't it's, think I've ever had Ovaltine. It's like chocolate milk. Well, it makes chocolate milk with like a malt flavor in it. I thought that went out of like... Does it, does it not exist anymore? I don't think it exists. I just dude. I haven't had it since I was probably a kid. Right. And I just assumed I'm like, oh, it's gotta be still around. Nest quick is still around. I'm pretty sure Ovaltine does not exist. Oh, I'm gonna go home and cry when I well look well, it up. I might but cry I'm pretty right sure now. You can't get your Ovaltine anymore. Oh, it's gonna be so disappointing. But as we're eating this, let's no, also talk about Ovaltine. the fact that uh, H5N1 registers as what we call. <clears> this <throat> is from uh, the CDC CDC spokesman. A virus with pandemic potential. Humans presumably all have some immunity to H1 and H3 influenza viruses, which can cause seasonal epidemics, but they can't cause pandemics at the level of what we saw with COVID because there's just too much immunity in the population. However, the human population is essentially completely naive, has no pre-existing immunity to H5 viruses. Therefore, similar to what we saw with COVID, in the worst case scenario, if this virus enters humans and start to spread, all of us are susceptible and we could see massive increases in numbers of cases. H5 viruses are rather deadly in poultry, but not so deadly. In, they're not so deadly in wild birds, but they seem to be deadly to mammals. And we don't know what they'll do in humans. Right now, the average person should be aware and avoid things like raw milk products. <laughs> Whoops. Yep. Our bad. Um, it's a good idea to prevent your cats from having contact with wild birds. If they're indoors, keep them indoors, blah, 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 blah. But they are in the uh, dairy cow supply in Kansas. So let's hope that this is not something that was affected because they found it in the milk. Now, a couple other things. With the concentration that they're finding of the dairy or of the uh, H5N1 virus in the local unpasteurized milk or in like Kansas unpasteurized milk, they think it's from uncleaned um milking equipment because it's a greater concentration in the milk than exists in the cow mm -hmm. right so that would make sense so they're they're looking into that um and i did check with dylan because we were talking about it you know <coughs> does the pasteurization process kill viruses and the pasteurization process is designed to kill microbes of which a virus is one of them like it, it crosses all three um fungal virus and whatever the other one was bacteria bacteria yeah. uh so yeah so we would have been safe had this been pasteurized but if there's an h5n1 outbreak yeah. has, has in it, kansas here 
here's where it started. Has it crossed to humans though? Is that I guess that's the question. No, it, so it has. Like there have been cases of humans with uh, avian flu, um, even in you know in this year. But they're always on poultry farms where the use, the person who's infected has had significant contact with those birds. Um, one of the interesting things is in other mammals, uh, they're finding it in bears, raccoons, and foxes because they think because they're eating the dead wild birds. But it moves out of their respiratory system rather quickly. Uh, where in a human, it, it, it tends to stay in your respiratory system. Interesting. So no, just just thought those things were interesting. All right. There's no need to worry if your vacuum sealed meat smells a bit sour. This is from the Daily Meal. I would not believe this. As bizarre it may sound, it's actually a very good sign if your meat has a bit of a sour or sulfuric odor. When the protein in question gets packed in tightly with its own juices, lactic acid buildup occurs inside the packaging, creating a funny smell in the trapped air that imbues the meat itself. It's not a sign your meat has gone bad. It's a sign the seal is actually tight and clean. I don't know that I would agree that it's a very good sign. Like, you could say it, it might not mean that your meat is spoiled, but I don't think you want to say it's a very good sign. What type of meat are we talking about? Because pork always has a slightly sour smell. Pork, I mean. Like, a, if you unvacuum pack a pork butt, I would say one out of every four times I notice, a, like, a slightly sour, sour smell. Pork's still 100% fine. In in. In pork, I know, like, um, depending upon when when do they actually harvest and bone out? Because are you doing pre rigor pork or post rigor pork, and it changes the pH of the meat? Uh -huh. And so I can see that. So your lactic acid is changing. So there's like something going on there. But are we talking about like beef? Because beef age. Tip. I mean, for some people, age shorter, longer, but. They still age for some yeah. decent length of time that yep. I wouldn't expect there to continue to be like that big of a change on the lactic acid and it to produce a smell. Well, there's not that many people who are doing pre regular pork, right? I mean, it, it's fairly yeah. uncommon. It's uh, for, yeah, like a small, small guys. Yeah, I small guys know. aren't doing it. It's uh -uh. mostly big commercial operators. Right. I only really know one of our customers in Kansas that does that I know does it for sure. So, Patrick, would you like some of this raw milk? No. It is delicious. <laughs> is it really? Yeah. How about some of the raw kefir? I thought we, read, we read about how terrible it was. We just talked about that. Well, not how terrible it oh, is, but how it's delicious. everyone's going to get bird flu. Oh. So, from a cow? From a something. I'll take, I'll take bird flu if it means the most delicious milk I've ever, ever drank in my life. I mean, that, that's a pretty big... <laughs> I, I think maybe you should tap the bird flu there. once for a lifetime of amazing milk. 30% mortality rate. Is that how high it yeah, is? Yeah, it's really high. Okay, well, let's, you know, let's, let's, let's renegotiate yeah, here. Yeah, let's not do that. Well, I mean, it's good. <laughs> Knowing my immune good. system right now as I'm talking yeah, and nasally and uh, my immune system sucks, like, I would, I would be the, I would be the dead one. So, some sad news that's not at all meat or food related. Um, I told you that one awesome house with a cool backyard and it just looked funky. Yeah, when you get there, the like the funky look to it is not actually cool. <laughs> and the craftsmanship was terrible on whoever redid it. Like I would have had to like tear out a bunch of stuff that they did and then restart. So not doing that, looking at more um reasonable stuff. Patrick, however. Hold on. Let's, let's do you want to share? No, that's on that's under wraps. But um uh <laughs> no, I might I, I might own a new home soon. But my, my question to you is like when you're looking for a house and you see that like the, the the landlord special and stuff, don't you instantly just go like, oh, I'm definitely not buying this house and like paint it over corners yep. and like the, you're just like you're trying to sell a house. What are you doing? No, it's because I know you're trying to hide something by doing that. And then you didn't even know how to hide it correctly. So it must be something really screwed up. Plus, I found water damage and some of the sidings was coming up. But the backyard awesome like went down into like almost like a valley there were hills dropping down there's a swamp at the bottom it would have been really fun to just let the dogs go actually maybe that would have been terrible they would have come back muddy all the time so maybe not a good thing but anyways oh i hate that yeah could you hear what? that that was my stomach oh my stomach's going bonkers 
just getting off on a tangent. Like, why why do dogs like yeah swampy muddy areas? <laughs> I, I, I usually keep my dog pinned up in the backyard. Sometimes let her roam like the whole yard. Let her out this last, I think it was this last weekend. Let her out. She went and found, there was like no water, but there was like one spot of water. She went over to it and just immediately rolls all around in it. And I'm just like, you stupid Do you know why thing. animals are rolling things? Uh, scent. I, but what do, you, what do you think for scent? I don't know. It's to mask their scent. Um, like, we are we good, Patrick? You might not have video for the first episode, but other than that, we're fine. So. We have no video. <laughs> we told people to go watch it because we were going to do things. When, like when I was in here and that looked like that, that was still good. So, so we had some video to be Potentially. With. Potentially, maybe. <laughs> okay. So if we're just getting you with video now, we apologize. Here is, we'll do it again next week. So yeah, we'll, we'll do it. This will be an Don't every time thing. It. Just We gave you a little appetizer. <laughs> here, hold on. Just start over right now. <laughs> we're beginning again. Um, mask their scent. So if they're rolling in something, it's usually because they're trying to hide. Like it's an instinct for them to not smell like them. Only thing I've ever seen, I knew a dog, the only thing it never would eat was a, a pickle. Try to feed it a pickle and it tried to roll in it. Other dogs eat pickle, no problem. But this Pause. is a roll in a... <laughs> His face, dude. What? The dog tried to roll in a pickle? or Like roll on the pickle. Okay. Like it smelled it and then just got down, like try to roll onto it. <laughs> just. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. Funny, okay. It's just weird. Oh, that's where Mr. Pickles came from. <laughs> <laughs> this is the same dog, though, that they fed it uh, like a, a whole dog bowl of mashed potatoes and it just ate and ate and ate and ate and then stopped, kind of looked at everybody and then just fell down on its side. Seriously thought we killed it, but it was just exhausted from carbo loading like it had never carbo loaded before i've done that before personal experience. <laughs> where you just fall down pretty much <laughs> there was one uh christmas uh years ago we went to a buffet and uh everybody in the family gets all this different stuff well it was this is me we're talking about there was a deal of gourmet mashed potatoes so i loaded up a plate of gourmet mashed potatoes that's it full plate piled up ate the whole thing then was drinking milk and water and just proceeded to let it expand in my stomach. Oh. And it was the greatest thing and the worst thing yeah, I've ever done in my life. I can imagine. Uh, getting on to meat matters. Don't waste your money. Price of beef, eggs, and pork remain high. This is from uh, WDRB. The good news is egg and beef prices are down from their 2022 highs when a carton of eggs was over $4. But after dropping in 2023, Eggs are up again, over $3. Steak is averaging $7 a pound, down from 2022, but still above the cost in 2019. Food experts said prices are a lot harder to get under control compared to some other consumer goods. Well, food prices are still up. They're just going up less at a much lower rate than they were previously, <laughs> said Kimberly Palmer from Nerd Wallet. I know that. What is the Nerd Wallet? I know that. Oh, okay. Uh, Palmer said the problem is that prices are still rising. There hasn't been any deflation. We're ha How come no one asks us for quotes? No one reaches out, uh, oh, the experts at Walton's. Like, Nerd Wallet's an app. Because I'm liable to like, say something oh. that they don't want to hear. Well, you know what I mean? The, well, who, the chick from Nerd Wallet knows all about everything we're talking about. Austin and I just had a talk, a uh, conversation a couple <laughs> weeks ago about how we feel we're treated by some of the bigger... Um, players and something yeah uh in media and not fairly would be the way that we oh would. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah Let's get, well i tried tried to get you to become a nutritionist last week and you weren't about <laughs> it so. uh but uh we're harvesting fewer animals for meat every year so the beef supply is kind of in a shrinking situation now what i don't understand here is the article was titled don't waste your money you look at the article or is that kind oh of yeah, yeah yeah sorry that's Sorry, exactly a new, what new we're supposed host. to be doing here. New host. <coughs> uh, so, yes, yeah, so from WDRB. Uh, it says don't waste your money. You have to eat. What are we talking about here? It's not a waste of money to spend money on food. Maybe spending $14.99 on a gallon of raw milk's a little excessive. Well, that's not a gallon. So well, I understand. Seven but, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. But that or a steak. Actually, that probably has more calories in it than a steak. Oh, yeah, no idea. Ooh, that's a good question. What is the calorie content? What if you made that? a milk steak with that? 
You ever seen <laughs> Wild card. <laughs> oh, I would love to know who's going to get that. We all three did, no problem. So I bet you a bunch of other people will. You know, like milk steak. No, nobody knows what milk steak is, Charlie. Well, just know what the rest is for a bottle. <laughs> So anyways, it's not a waste of money when you're trying to buy food with it. Uh, Philadelphia meat heist. Thieves make off with pallets. Did you segue to Philly with a Philly record? There this you go. Oh, my gosh. The next thing you know, Green Man's going to pop out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think either one of us would look very fetching in a Green Man suit. No, that's what Patrick's for. Oh, my for. God. <laughs> yeah, dude. I could do it. I'll just I would 100 percent John's face really hard. I would 100 percent come dressed as Dennis though. In oh, in uh, wait, so wait if then I get to be Mac Nightman. Oh, you're You'd Mac have to put. Can I be? Lucky. Am I Fat Mac or Skinny no, no, Mac? No, 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 no. You're Charlie in this scenario because I'm. Oh no, but if he's Green Man, he's Charlie. <laughs> well, we you could be. be Charlie. I'm a multiple I'm a much things. Mac, obviously. But okay. I've got the, the I get sash, it. and we do the Day Man Night Man. We recreate that. We are so we're far getting off so segue, but this is so important. Like, I need to know who I am. If I'm Charlie now, I'm actually on board with that. I get to get high off gasoline, <laughs> paint. <laughs> are, you tra- are you drinking straight paint again, Charlie? So, oh, it's j- just so everybody knows, these are all jokes from "It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia," <laughs> which is like the greatest TV show. The of all first time. like four seasons of it literally are yeah. one of the best comedies of all time. They should have stopped after that. Anyways, <laughs> Philadelphia meat heist. Thieves make off with pallets of meat in Northeast Philadelphia. Now, I couldn't find anything that said how all much right. the value was, but the fact that they use the word pallets of meat to me <laughs> indicates that it's quite high, but it doesn't say anywhere in here what an actual value of it would be. That's a sweet oh, movie. Got to be a lot easier. What's that? Way. It's like the town, but with meat. <laughs> You can make a good a bunch of broken guys. lizard movie about yeah, that. Be, yeah, yeah. Well, I'd watch that. There's actually an event in Philadelphia. This is meat related, where it's like the biggest like a uh, chicken wing convention might be the wrong word, but it's sure. like in you can imagine chicken wings, Philadelphia alcohol. It ends in such oh yeah, it's violence. Might, it might as well won a World Series yeah. in every sport at the same time. It's crazy. Absolute violence. Uh, empty shelves at commissaries. Officials aim to beef up the supply. Uh, not a ton to talk about here, but uh, if, for those who don't know, um, a commissary is close. Get out of here. I don't want to do that. Grocery store on a military base. On a base. military base. Continue without supporting. There we go. Uh, so they're starting to see em- empty shelves on commissaries. That's not a good sign. If there is one portion of the population that we need to keep well-fed and energized, it is our so- soldiers. So... Uh, it does look sound like it's more of a supply chain issue than anything else. It's not like they're running out of food. They're just having problems getting it to the commissaries. Still a disturbing breakdown. Uh, snout to tail strategy sells more pork in Chicago grocery stores. This is Tony's Market. They're out of Chicago. Uh, a couple of years ago, they started figuring out that to continue selling the amount of pork that they used to they're gonna have to branch out and find new markets Uh, they did it by finding the uh, hispanic market um want to read just a couple things from and then talk about it this multicultural focus is one reason that illinois pork producers association and national pork board have teamed up with tony's fresh market on promotions and campaigns to push even more pork to the consumers and help drive demand in one of the country's biggest markets for pork to remain relevant, the industry needs to focus on future demand. Do you hear that text? Says Kim Hamilton, Director of Marketing for the Illinois Pork Producers Association. The industry has been reaching a certain consumer that is aging out, resulting in a loss of volume. If we're going to bring younger consumers into the category, one of those groups has to be multicultural. That got me thinking, who is out there trying to... I, I have to assume that there's a ton of, or a lot of Hispanics who make their own sausage right like a chorizo all that is hispanic yeah maybe we should start doing like a like a focused ad campaign slash some content specifically for hispanic Uh, they i i that's almost like hand in hand like culturally specific but also seasoning specific so it's not like Mm -hmm. right so there's one 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 way to look at it two ways to look at it so yeah like the chocolate chili bratwurst we should just brand it as the moulet moulet yep. um obviously the south of the border cheddar worst 
and then the big one chorizo like we we have some seasonings to do that we've done nothing to try to reach that market i was at an authentic mexican place connie's uh and their chorizo was great it was actually uh, very surprising but i thought it would be a little bit more link sausage is the wrong word but you know the chorizo where it's actually structurally there uh-huh. and then pulls apart mm-hmm. you know no it was very it was very crumbly and yep. loose and i didn't mind it because it actually still maintained the flavor but um yeah that's so like the we have two chorizos we have chorizo and we have spanish chorizo we've always you before we had the spanish chorizo we always used the regular chorizo to make sausage but that's not really what it's designed for it is designed to be the crumbly yeah like that's why you add vinegar to it to denature the meat not let it like bind together ah, okay. you want well, the, it to be that crumbly. the flavor profile for what it's worth was very similar to what i remembered all is actually tasting <laughs> yeah. like so yeah it was uh, good to see yeah of all the the meats in uh spanish cooking mexican cooking whatever i think chorizo is my favorite thing to yeah actually consume that was the best get that dollar tube and then just have that with some <laughs> eggs on oh, a saturday morning phenomenal just see what See, there's a sweet spot of cooking. You let it go too long, it's just a runny mess. But yes. You got to you gotta trust your eye and go, no, that's done. Get the eggs, bread ready. Let's rock it. So, so I would do them all in the same pot or yeah. pan. Yeah. Do the so, eggs after. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep. And then by the time Get it's all done that setting. Up. And then, yeah, I'm with you. Everything was perfect. And yep. then 45 minutes later, the photo finish. <laughs> <laughs> all right. McDonald's $25 deal goes viral. Users blame California minimum wage increase. Uh a viral social media about a $25 McDonald's deal in quotation marks recently sparked an online debate about California's minimum wage increase. A TikTok <clears throat> user who posts videos under the username Shannon Montepea shared the video on March 27th. She was in the drive through of a Southern California McDonald's location when she saw a sign for a 40 piece chicken McNugget meal deal, which also included two large orders of fries. The price of the meal bundle was twenty five thirty nine, including tax. Okay, so it's twenty five thirty nine for forty piece and two large fries. You couldn't even throw in a sprite. I feel like forty piece chicken McNugget. It's pretty significant, right? Though. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I remember the summer the twenty pieces became like five dollars or something like that, and then it quickly jumped back up to like ten bucks. Right. Following the next summer, but um, yeah, what is she even talking about here? A four a forty piece. When I read this article, I was expecting it to be like $25 for like a WAP or not a WAP or yeah. Big Mac. So we're just something. debating her opinion. There's not like I thought he was going to say like, actually, it comes out to cheaper if you buy things separately. Now, here you go. Ten years ago, the average price of a 10 piece Big Nugget meal was $5.99. Now that meal is $10.99. Yeah, the ten piece alone you can't get for less than seven or eight bucks, which is weird because like well, this is ten ninety nine on a good wing deal. You're like, oh, fifty cents a wing. Right? Could you imagine now you're paying close to a dollar for a nugget standard. Uh, that's disgusting. Dollar for a nugget standard, and then what meanwhile you, at the at the grocery store it's eight ninety nine for like whatever the amount of ounce. Yeah, the full yeah. big bag, and I don't they're know, not. They're like not. Said, as what I say like a year ago, I've been saying stuff. you're you're paying for the convenience and for someone else to make your food. That's what it is. The manager's special used to be 40 nuggets, a gallon of tea, and a large fry for like $20. Just for reference, a four, the 40-piece McNugget meal in Wichita yeah. is fifteen nineteen. dollars That's still... Wait, yeah. really? Uh, I think we... I'll go try to get it. Right. That's after. not bad. It's not bad, but I don't think that's true. You said 40 pieces? Mm-hmm. No, a 10-piece is close to $10. Order know. that online. Let's get it. That's a sweet deal. I'm, I'm, on, I'm on Uber Eats right now. <laughs> Even on Uber Eats? Yeah. Hmm. 40. 4 zero. 40. <laughs> add to cart. 15, 19. Oh, I have to add sauce. You have to choose six. Okay. Thank <laughs> you God. have to choose six sauces? <laughs> Austin, this is just... Kill- you should keep going to the bot to see if it actually remains true to the price because I'm fine. You think it's going to jump now. up? I, I've never used Uber Eats. So. No, nah, I just delete it off my... I kind of... I'll find a, a, a promo or something. We usually start a summer and I go, well, let's see what we got. And, you know... You, <laughs> Clean up, but you got to spend forty dollars worth of food and then put it in your fridge for the, and eat only that for the weekend to make it make sense. But well, I even I even have a, a free promo for free delivery right now. So fifteen nineteen free delivery. You think it could get here? Three in time? oh three eighty seven in tax. So you're really what eighteen nineteen dollars. They want a four forty one tip. So Uber Eats total would be twenty three forty seven. Okay, but, but that's what she that's what she's saying. Yeah, but that's also with Uber Eats. Sure. Okay. Only Dude, five bucks. Kansas is much cheaper no. than California. So your whole family can eat for twenty three dollars tonight is what you're telling me. 
Everyone just uses That's it. actually a whole lot cheaper than normally. Right? <laughs> yeah. You'd... Yeah. I mean, I get it. I get what they're saying, but that, it, that just didn't seem that bad to me. Like when I clicked on the article, I was really expecting it to be for yeah. a Big Mac meal deal or something mm-hmm. like that. But yeah. for a 40 piece nugget, that's pretty. Yeah. I mean, it's a shame that we are talking about McDonald's though. Still, so like, They're not high quality. I will say they are. that is true. So. That is very true. All right. I'm a fan of low quality food though. I Spam think canned meat fine. back on the menu. As relentless food inflation forces cash strap shoppers to scale back. Demand for cheap canned meats like spam and Vienna sausages. Spam is not cheap. Who 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 decided that that was meats, cheap? Okay. Vienna sausages are cheap. He spam was is very offended by that. Spam is not. No. <laughs> Take that away out of the Vienna sausage category. That is that's how I feel about the 40 piece nuggets. Just mention spam and he's like, oh, that's he's not cheap. upset. Are you yeah. Me? My God! What? Uh, as cash strap shoppers look to stretch their paychecks in the myth or in the face of relentless food inflation, midst would have been a better word there. Conagra, the conglomerate behind Duncan Hines, Hunt's Ketchup, and Bird's Eye, said this week its canned meat portfolio, which includes Armor Stars Vienna sausages, is that the kind you like? Armor Stars. You sure. don't have a. Okay. I recognize the I, picture. I, I mean, I'm going to buy the store brand. A cup. So. And Manwich Sloppy Joe's is on fire. Miguel Garcia, who owns supermarkets in the Bronx under Food Town, Key Foods, and Met Food Market Brands, said his stores have started to showcase Spam, Libby's Corned Beef, and Chef Boyardee's Spaghetti and Meatballs as sales have leaped 10%. Spam is a regular item again. I'm selling them at a discount now because I'm buying more. Classic Spam is five thirty one dollars a pound. That's not cheap. That's not that cheap. I can go buy lunch meat cheaper than that. Yeah, it's the it's the it's the cheap lunch meat. Sure, it's not very good. Right. But to be honest, it's yeah, it's not cheap. No, is I agree. Spam sliced or is it just one? No, it's a one, one thing of meat. Yep. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's okay. a hunk. Most people slice it. Sure. I'm looking at the photo. I'm like, that can't. I mean, either that's pre-sliced or they slice it. <laughs> I mean, but a a seeded bun is what they're going for. Sesame seed bun, right? Yeah, they care about their bun. That is a good looking bun. <laughs> it's actually actually spam's not on that. That's just all tomato, folks. That's no, that there's a square <laughs> spam. Oh, it's a pop. Dave's d- of double, so yeah. Hickory smoke flavored spam is only four thirty one a pound. Jesus. That's what is where the it's best at? bang for your buck at the grocery store. If you're getting meat. What can you have the most of? Spend or talking about like on, from a health standpoint, yeah. I mean, chicken, uh, yeah. I typically go buy like if I want it like ready to eat, like I, I keep chicken in my my uh fridge, uh, fridge all know. the time. What lunch meat, yeah. Chicken? You can usually, it's I mean, it's, oh. it's expensive compared to where it used to be a few years ago. I still, I still gripe every time I have to buy it, but you can get pretty darn cheap chicken lunch meat. Oh, I just meant like fresh chicken. No, I don't want to have to where cook you, it. Yeah. What, what do you mean? Just like chicken breast, chicken thighs. Oh, you're getting anything like that, and then cook it. Oh, that's how you're gonna Lame. get the most. <laughs> Anytime you're asking somebody else to do part of the cooking process for you, it's usually gonna up the cost. Yeah. Now, with some yeah. things, not quite as much. Like with certain lower quality deli meats, because they're using undesirable cuts well, parts of the chicken. Well, he said. Like deli meat for chicken, and mm-hmm. that's, that's more that's like restructured, right? Yep. So, like, what's the most chicken, chickeny chicken you can get? Right? You got a rotisserie chicken. You go, okay, that's that's Pretty a dead chicken-y. chicken, right, right there. Yep. Then you got chicken strips. It's been it's been stripped. It's right. Been, it's Who been knows? Rebreaded, yep. being frozen, reintroduced, already cooked, and then out there, and then chicken deli. Which one? If Is I want mo- straight up chicken, am I getting the most percentage without all the filler? What's going on there? Rotisserie. For sure. My thoughts exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. That's my vote. Yep. Cheapest, most chickeny, and good for you. Yeah. Base. Let's absolutely. do it. Absolutely. You can get them cooked. They're still like, what, five bucks at Costco? Yeah, you can. Uh, Six bucks at I Sam's, something like that. read something that they upped the price of something at Costco finally in the food market. Pizza, I think. Was it hot pizza? Hot dogs. They're hot dogs. No, because the hot dogs was the one the guy threatened to kill somebody if he oh, tried Jesus. to. It's like the Arnold Palmer of a. What was it? Ah, whatever. I read it. No, 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 you barely, you gave it five seconds. I, I can't remember. <laughs> I'm never going to. All right, let's move on to wild card. Insurance scam. Hey, get out of here. Insurance scammer who wanted $1.3 million 
caused his own amputation with dry ice. A Taiwanese man oh, there's photos? was hit with insurance fraud charges for allegedly trying to claim over a million dollars on payouts for a double amputation due to self-inflicted dry ice injuries. The 24-year-old suspect, identified only by his last name, Chang, lost both his legs below the knees due to fourth-degree frostbite, bone necrosis, and sepsis. After the amputation, Chang supposedly applied for compensation from eight different insurance policies with five companies that totaled $1.3 million. Look at So that. fourth degree is only good if you're a black belt. He had to zip, <laughs> he had to zip tie himself down to prevent himself from getting out of there. Yeah, because well, you well, should get out of there. You should get out oh, of there. Oh, he just wants to pay. He, was just he wants, to, yep. It was him and his buddy. They were uh, poor college students. Why is what? I mean, why photograph it, though? I don't know. Hey, let's, <laughs> let's film our insurance fraud. Yeah, not Idiots. a good idea. What are you talking about? But absolutely terrible. All right. FWP warns of increased grizzly back black bear sightings across western Montana. Um, thankfully, we're not going to Montana this year. We're going to Minneapolis. But get ready for more and more grizzly bears in the Montana area. They're going to be reintroducing them to the Bitterroot Valley. What? And I don't know if you know this about bears, but they don't just stay in one place. Like they travel and they're mean. They they're very mean. Uh, although I did see a really cute video the other day of a guy who lost his husky, and he put up a drone. I saw to, that. Did you see that it? So cool. It's this husky playing with three wild bears. Someone, it's a mama bear and two like sub adults, and the husky's like going up and biting them and playing like, with guys. Yeah, like and he's the, been part of the crew his whole life. The bears are having a great time with it. The like they're not like, trying oh to hit God. him or anything. They're, they're like, like this guy. Jeez, huh. yeah. Why is he following? You us? can tell they are getting like a little annoyed with him. Like, all right, dude, calm down. But We're trying to relax. Someone here. in the comments says they are canine creatures. Both of them. I went. Oh, yeah. I didn't even like. I would have never drew parallels between dogs and bears. Besides Wait, bears? the bears, they're sometimes. On yeah, there. bears are, are related to or in the the dog branch. Huh. Kind of bears are actually closer to raccoons than dogs, though. Interesting. <laughs> Just a giant raccoon. Wow. Now that you think say that out loud. That'd be terrifying. That would be terrifying, <laughs> especially if it was rabid. All right. Last story for the day. Brutal shark attack leaves tourist uh, with leg nearly ripped off while staying at five star resort in the Maldives. Now. It's not very graphic, but <laughs> sorry. No viewer warnings. Just start counting. How many people the shark gets? Oh, what? I mean, he's on a tear. So he's just being cool, chill, like, oh, look, there's a shark. Shark goes, you know what? I don't actually like that you're down here with all those bubbles and making all this. Here, take a bite. Oh, that's you one. Get one. Coming back, that's two. There's three. Uh, Coming over here, four. Oh, what's that guy doing? Getting Here's five. There's six. Oh, this is your new favorite video. Oh, my God. The shark was just like, <laughs> I've had enough of you people in the ocean. You don't belong here. It looks Why like are there so many? Were they like doing something with the shark? Was this? No, it wasn't like that time that they were like trying to ride it with the fins or doing whatever they were doing that last time the Dude. guy got annihilated. That's like a single guy trying to start a mosh pit and no one moving. He's like, oh, well, you guys are the whole <laughs> Well, it's, you can't get out of the way of it very quickly. Come on. Right, just imagine how quickly that guy in the dead center that's just like, I'm not moving, I'm not moving, I'm not, and then it comes right at him. He's just like, Oh, Jesus, oh, my God. Oh, great. There's some mass shooting in Philadelphia. Oh, no, yeah, everyone, don't look at the news. <laughs> See if there's any. No, you guys want to act like you're hosting our own news channel? Well, there is a story, and I can't believe I can't find it now. They found a great white shark in a lagoon off of uh, South, North or South Carolina. Which is incredibly frightening. What do you classify as a lagoon? I mean, it's salt water, but it's like, you know, it's kind off of, the main ocean. Yeah. Like, you know, it's this shark, shark in the pond. The pond was a lagoon. It's still connected to the ocean, mm -hmm. but it's like kind of goes up in and there's land yes. kind of all around. Yep. Okay. Yep. It's a mean <laughs> hockey player from California. LA goon. Not bad. A goon. Oh, yeah. okay. Not bad. Sorry. Sorry. Well, not, not your best. Dude, uh, sorry. We're on minute. <laughs> I can't tell because this yeah. isn't accurate. 55. Chris. So there you go. Do you have anything else you'd like to discuss? Do you? I don't. Okay. I was just asking. No. I, I thought there was intent behind we it. We have run to the end of what <laughs> I had prepared. 
That's all I got. Uh, that's all we got. All right, guys. Thanks. We'll see you next time. Thanks for checking out the Meat Logistics Podcast. To shop everything but the meat, head on over to Waltons.com. To get your meat processing questions answered by experts and enthusiasts alike, head on over to our online community at meatgistics.com. Waltons, everything but the meat.